Welcome back to another iDoctor UK video. In this video, I'm going to be replacing the battery in this iPhone 12 whilst avoiding the non-genuine part warning that you might get when replacing it with any other aftermarket battery. As well as the usual disassembly tools, we will need some additional specialist tools, including one of these Qianli battery welding tools and one of these amp-centric tag-on flexors for the battery. To begin the repair, use a pentalobe screwdriver to remove the two screws from the bottom of the phone. Now place the phone face down on the heat mat for the next five minutes so that the adhesive holding down the screen will soften. I've got my heat mat set to 70 degrees C. However, if you don't have one, you can use a hot air gun or hairdryer to achieve the same results. Once the phone's hot enough, take a suction cup, attach it to the bottom of the screen and begin lifting upwards carefully. If you find that it's not lifting at all, add a couple of drops of isopropyl alcohol just to help further soften the adhesive. Once a small gap's been created, insert a guitar pick a couple of millimetres and begin running it up the edge of the phone. Run the pick up the opposite edge of the phone as well. And now with the two edges released, we can give the phone a little wiggle and open it up just like opening a book. I'll close it back up, remove the phone from the hot plate and remove the suction cup now. Then I'll place a heavy object like a mug behind the phone to hold it open and stop the screen from falling down whilst we're removing the screws. Take a tri-wing screwdriver and remove the two screws holding down the little shield that holds the screen and battery in place. Remove the shield. Then using a plastic prying tool, disconnect the battery to isolate power from the device, followed by the two connectors for the OLED screen and touch panel. Moving up to the top of the device now, there's four more tri-wing screws to remove that holds down the shield for the ear speaker and front sensor array. Remove the shield with some tweezers, then disconnect this flex with a plastic tool. We can remove the screen from the phone now and store it safely for later. To remove the battery, add a few drops of isopropyl alcohol all the way around it and allow that to soak in for the next three to five minutes. After that's had a few minutes to soak in, I'll use some tweezers to begin pulling out the battery adhesive tabs from underneath the battery. These will usually snap and leave us doing the prior shame. And I'll be very surprised if they don't on this one. I've always found that every model of iPhone after the iPhone 8, the battery tabs are particularly difficult to remove. No matter how much you pull on them with the tweezers or whatever, no matter how hot you get it, no matter how much alcohol you get underneath it, you'll always end up snapping them. Anyway, now that the battery's removed, I'm going to remove any leftover adhesive from the chassis using my tweezers. We can now work on this battery. And to begin with, we need to remove the sheathing from the bottom of the battery. I'll use tweezers to do this. Next, we, we need to remove this tape from the protecting the terminals of the battery and the battery BMS. This plastic shield's next, and then there's another layer of tape, which will help unfold the battery. With the terminals exposed, I'm gonna place this battery onto this little fiberglass jig to hold it in place. Then I'll use one of these chisel tools to remove the terminals of the battery from the BMS. I'm trying to remove as much of the old welded stuff as possible at this point, but don't worry if a little bit gets left behind because we can file or grind that off later. The negative terminal on this one just became slightly bent, so I'm gonna use some ceramic tweezers just to cut it off to avoid further damage to that. And then I'll flatten it back down to make it sort of straight again. I'll use a Dremel grinding tool now to file the terminals on the BMS flat and do the same on the positive terminal. What I like to do with these iPhone 12 batteries is to place a piece of nickel to make an additional terminal on these batteries and it just makes it a bit better for the, for the weld to stick to. So I'll line that up on top of the existing terminal and weld it into place. I've got the welder set onto auto on full power on this one. Although different welding machines will require different settings 
I'll apply another piece of nickel onto the positive terminal now and weld it in place. Then use the chisel tool to create a fold in it. I currently like to use these IP9 spot welding batteries. They come without a BMS already attached, so they're ready to weld straight away, as well as all the stickers and gummins that you need to go alongside it. I'll just straighten out these uh, anode and cathode. and then I will chop them off. You can measure these out, although at this point we do a lot of these and I'm sort of at a stage where we can just guess where we need to cut it off. It just needs a few millimeters and of course to be even. Now I'll line up the battery into those little uh, tabs that I made. We're starting off by welding the negative side, which is the nickel side and the slightly easier side to weld. I'll weld this part first. Now we'll do the same to the opposite side and using our welding tool secure it into place. With that secured now we'll give it a little pull to make sure that there's no movement and that the welds are secure which I'm happy with. Now we need to just fold over these little corners on the battery that sometimes get in the way. Now I'm going to add the double-sided tape from the packet and that just sticks onto the inside there. Then fold over the BMS like that. Now we can place the plastic sheathing over the battery terminals. Finally, we can go on with the tape, fold that over. Now we can take our tag on flex and we're going to attach the female end onto the now prepared battery. Like that. Now I can reattach the screen. And the proximity sensor at the top. Now I'll attach the battery. Now instead of starting the phone with the power button, it's important to boot the phone the first time using the lightning connector. And what we're expecting it to say now is that unknown part warning. Before we even get to settings, we can see that we've got the important battery message just there, which is fine and what we expect. We can disconnect the power, disconnect the battery again, including the tag on flex. Then we're just gonna reconnect it one more time, close up the phone and plug in the lightning cable again. This time when the phone boots, we should get 100% battery health and it should have reprogrammed itself. So we go to settings, go down to battery, and as you can see, we've got that 100% battery health there. So now we can disconnect the power one last time, open up the phone, disconnect the battery, and now we're gonna remove this prepared battery, remove the tag on flex. And now we can apply the sticker to the back of the battery. Now we'll fold over the top tabs of the battery, peel back the pink sheet, and finally reinstall the battery one last time. Apply pressure where the adhesive is, just to make sure that it's stuck properly. Disconnect the battery and remove the screen. We can now remove any adhesive from the dust and moisture resistant seal. Install the new dust and moisture resistant seal to the edges of the chassis. And finally, reconnect the screen one last time, reconnect the battery, and reattach the shields for the battery and display connectors. Followed by the shield at the top, and the four tri-wing screws that hold that down.
Now we'll remove the last layer of the dust and moisture resistant seal and reinstall the screen. Can now reinstall the two pentalobe screws at the bottom of the phone. And this time when the phone boots without the tag on flex installed, we should be able to see that the battery health is back to 100% and that there are no non-genuine part warnings on the device. Thanks for watching and see you next time.